This is Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. Good morning, everyone. Beautiful shot of the horizon across Sarasota this morning. As you can see, pretty dark out there. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jacqueline Matter. Let's check in with meteorologist John Scalzi. Good morning, John. What can we expect for the next couple of days? Well, I tell you what, we have some changing weather conditions. We're going to be kind of riding a little bit of a rainfall roller coaster over the next <laughs> several days. We'll talk about that coming up in a few. But for this morning, I think a pretty decent start to the day. Little in the way of any kind of rainfall chance, maybe a scattered spritz, but that's about it. Otherwise, thunderstorms will hold off until around the noontime hour when they'll form close to the coast and then move inland. We do have an 801 launch from the uh, Space Center today, so hopefully. Hopefully we'll be able to see that contrail as that ship lifts uh, into space. We'll look for today a mix of sun and clouds to start the morning with a better chance of rainfall during the early afternoon close to the coast, mid to late afternoon inland. Rain chance slightly less than yesterday at 30 percent. Big change tomorrow, though. We'll talk about that coming up in just a few. Back to you. All right. Thank you, John. Taking a look at your first alert traffic this morning. 301 heading north and southbound as you pass by State Road 70. See some more cars on the roadway. Downtown Bradenton seeing some more congestion as well. I-75 looking clear as we head into Sarasota County. Biggest slowdowns really still on that Bayfront area. I do believe there is some construction going on throughout the next couple of mornings in that area from what I've been told. So keep an eye out for that if you are heading throughout that area. Business 41 heading northbound throughout Venice and Nokomis seeing some slowdowns, but other than that, no accidents at 602 on your Friday morning. Topping our news this hour, professional rowing teams from across the world are packing their bags and heading right here to the Sun Coast for training ahead of the 2017 World Rowing Championships. Soon, residents will start to see some big changes at Nathan Benderson Park with the international event just a few weeks away. ABC 7's Jess Dowdrick joins us live from Nathan Benderson Park. Jess? Good morning, Jacqueline. In less than three weeks, the first team from overseas, Ukraine, will be arriving here at Nathan Benderson Park to train. Now, even though the competition for the 2017 World Rowing Championships doesn't start until September 24th, most teams will be in town long before that training. In the next week, containers will be arriving from overseas with the skulls and shells that the rowers will be using here at Nathan Benderson Park. Also, grandstands and other infrastructure at the park will soon be going up while finishing touches are being put on the new lookout tower. Now, tickets are going fast. The World Rowing Championship organization already meeting 80% of their revenue goal a month before the event. But tickets are expected to go even faster in coming weeks. America is one of several countries that still hasn't solidified which rowers will compete. There are still some countries that have not finalized their rosters uh, for the uh, rowers who will be coming here for the event. So there are still family and friends uh, of these rowers who have you know, tried out for the national team that don't know if their son, their daughter, their friend will be participating in this event. So once those, those rosters are finalized, we're going to see um, a, a major uh, push uh, in ticket sales. If you're interested in going to the 2017 World Rowing Championships, you can go online and purchase your tickets. Now, the night before the competition begins, that's September 23rd, there will be a free opening ceremony, and the organizers are hoping that a lot of community members attend. I'll tell you much more about that coming up at 6.30. For now, reporting live in Sarasota, Jess Aldrich, ABC7, your Suncoast News. All right, thank you so much, Jess. Now to the terror attack in Barcelona, Spain, where at least 13 people are dead and more than 100 injured. This all comes after a terrorist barreled through one of the city's biggest tourist spots in a rented van. This morning, police are still searching for that driver. ABC's Emily Rao has more from Washington. The dead and injured lay sprawled in the street, the bloody aftermath of a terror attack. I heard screams of people and when I looked up, saw the white van just knocking people over. At, at high speed. It was late afternoon when police say this white van swerved onto a sidewalk packed with pedestrians in Barcelona's historic Las Ramblas district. Witnesses estimating that van speeding by at 50 miles per hour. But everybody started to run because they're screaming from behind and everybody just ran forward. <laughs> Tourists scattering, running for cover as the panic spread. It was scary not to know what's happening 
and just seeing people running outside. The crushed van finally stopping, the driver running away, leaving behind at least 100 people hurt and more than a dozen dead. How can this be happening in Barcelona? Investigators say 28-year-old Driss Ukaber rented that van. ABC News learning he was born in Morocco, where he recently visited before arriving back in Spain last Sunday. Police arrested Ukaber and another man, but are still looking for the driver of the van. And 60 miles away, five more suspects dead, shot by police in the seaside town of Cambrils, also connected to the attack in Barcelona. The State Department says one American was hurt in the attack, and Vice President Mike Pence also pledging overnight that the U.S. and our allies will find and punish whoever is responsible. Emily Rao, ABC News, Washington. Back here on the Sun Coast, people are reacting to yesterday's tragedy in Barcelona. It really hits close to home for some people here on the Sun Coast who are either from there, have family there, or have visited the area. It was really scary for us, obviously, besides like my grandma walking around there all the time, my brother, who I miss a lot. <laughs> and then like it was really close by where he works, but thankfully he's okay. Just the thought of um, uh, someone trying to hurt people on that street, it's really, really shocking because there's zillions of people going up and down that street, uh, and, and a lot of them are tourists. We'll continue to keep you updated as this story unfolds in Barcelona this morning. For the very latest, you can head to our website at mysuncoast.com. Happening today, commissioners plan to hold a special meeting this afternoon to talk about their concerns with an upcoming unity march in downtown Bradenton and how that could affect public safety. Commissioners urged anyone participating in a Monday night event or any other gatherings to remain peaceful and respectful. Commissioners will discuss options they can take in advance of those planned events on Monday. 607 this morning and new information as the leaders of the USS Fitzgerald have been removed from their duties over the ship's deadly collision back in June. The commanding officer, executive officer and senior non-commissioned officer have all been removed. Two of the officers were sleeping and another was not on the bridge at the time of that collision. The officers were notified of the Navy's 7th Fleet Commander's intent to, quote, detach them for cause. A final investigation into that collision is ongoing. Well, Ford is ending a harassment investigation thanks to a $10 million payout. The automaker was accused of harassing women and black employees at two plants in Illinois. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission says it found probable cause that supported harassment claims. Although Ford is forking over cash, it did not admit to any liability. As the Ford officials say, they've taken proper action. Roughly 1,500 Ford employees may be qualified for a payment. Well, we haven't seen President Trump since his news conference heard around the world earlier this week, but Governor Rick Scott has. Scott had lunch with Trump at his golf club in New Jersey yesterday. They discussed the president's commitment to partner with Florida on repairs to the federally operated Herbert Hoover Dyke at Lake Okeechobee. No word yet on if they talked about this week's recent events. Former Tampa Bay Buccaneers head coach Tony Dungy is challenging all professional Tampa sports teams to help pay to remove a Confederate memorial outside the Hillsborough County Courthouse. You might think the commission well, voted to remove the memorial earlier this week, but only if private money was raised to do so. Well, that has happened, all thanks to co contributions made by the Buccaneers, the Lightning, and the Tampa Bay Rays, which exceeded their $140,000 goal. 6.09 this morning and families will not be allowed to visit loved ones that are incarcerated across Florida this weekend. That's because weekend visitations have been canceled at all state prisons across the state. Florida Departments of Corrections have placed all of its inmates on lockdown after officials received credible threats involving several institutions. There's no word on when that lockdown will be lifted, but the department says it plans to resume normal operations as soon as possible. More than 97,000 inmates are being held in 151 correctional facilities across Florida. 
Well, this weekend, not looking too bad if you want to head out on the boat or head yes. out to the, to the beach this weekend. Yes, I think so, particularly tomorrow. Okay. okay. Now, Sunday will probably will be wet again. Okay. And, in fact, we could be uh, even wetter than we are today, and today we'll have a few less showers around than yesterday. So we got kind of a roller coaster going okay. on here <laughs> in terms of our uh, rain chances. Uh, as we head into next week, though, we have some uh, big question marks in the forecast. We'll talk about that. All right. Thanks so much, John. Still ahead, we'll have your first alert. Traffic and the nation obsessed with that upcoming solar eclipse. We'll take a look at how local libraries are making sure kids are st staying safe looking at that historic event when we come back. It's been about a month, and I can honestly say I've seen the change in me. I went from being a depressed girl who didn't want help to this happy, caring girl who loves helping other people. I just really hope that people that went through what I went through get the help that they need because their story is important and they are loved. Thank you so much for everything. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice, choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12 year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. It's Lincoln's summer sales event here at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKX Sport Utility for $349 per month or Lincoln's flagship, the 2017 Continental, for $449 per month. We have a great selection of certified pre-owned Lincolns. These vehicles have warranties up to 100,000 miles and come with complimentary roadside assistance. Alex Karras Lincoln, affordable luxury, winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award, serving Florida Sun Coast since 1978. We're located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US-41. Hi, I'm Chef Judy. Every Wednesday morning, I'll be with the chefs at the Publix Aprons Cooking School, serving up the most wonderful dishes. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. This is an important medical announcement. Barred IVC filters have been linked to punctured veins and problems with migration. Anyone who's received a barred IVC filter must receive medical monitoring and may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you have the Bard Recovery G2 or G2 Express filter, you are in a class of patients who should be compensated for some expenses. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to people who should have been warned about the risks of the Bard IVC filters. Call the IVC filter hotline if you or a loved one has received an IVC filter and experienced a vein puncture or required medical monitoring. You must call now. Call 800-329-3089. 800-329-3089. The ABC7 First Alert Hurricane Guide arms you with vital information to protect your family and property when severe weather threatens the Suncoast, including how to create your readiness plan and survival kit. Visit MySuncoast.com and download yours today. Check out MySuncoast.com slash dining, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice, choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. Well, we start out the day with kind of a mix of sun and clouds, a daytime high that'll top out warm and steamy just as it did yesterday, and a morning temperature that's just a little bit cooler at 76 degrees, a 73 degree dew point southeast wind at about three. A little bit cooler because of yesterday's showers and thunderstorms kind of laying down a cooler bed of air to work with here. And as we move into the afternoon, we'll have enough sunshine around that that really won't make all that much difference. 75 degrees in Wachula, Arcadia at 76, 76 in Mayaka, Parish, Bradenton. Lakewood Ranch at 77, so is Northport, 79 in Inglewood, 78 in Venison, 81 at Longbow Key. Really, as you look down the road, there are 
two, two and a half important things in the forecast. One is that today we'll have some average shower and thunderstorm chances at about 30% or so. They'll start near the coastline and then they'll move inland, though right now everything is very quiet on the Sun Coast. But tomorrow we have a chance at a little bit of drier air moving in. When that drier air moves in, I think we'll be able to reduce our rain chances fairly significantly. Um, and by that, I mean we'll probably cut them in half. So tomorrow will probably be the best of the weekend days. On Sunday, the rain chances go up a lot, actually. Maybe double or triple because moisture will be returned and this high pressure ridge will lift north. We'll start to get an easterly wind flow, which will encourage the showers to be closer to our coast. So hot and humid with 100 plus feels like temperature today uh, because of all the humidity around the afternoon thunderstorms and a west wind pushing most of the thunderstorm activity into inland areas. Then a little drier tomorrow and a little wetter on Sunday. That's number one. Number two is the tropics. And we do have some activity out there that bears watching, particularly this tropical wave. Now, that's Harvey. Harvey is going to continue on a track that takes it toward Central America. So, of course, it's important if you have friends or relatives or in the Windward Islands or you are planning on heading there today or tomorrow, uh, and also for Central America. Belize particularly could have a tropical storm. But this one is very important because it does have some potential for development, and it is on a forecast track where the models cluster across a solution that takes it pretty close to the southern tip of the state of Florida or to Cuba. So when a, of course, forecast track is in that zone during hurricane season, it causes us to kind of keep our eyes open and uh, keep it in the back of our mind as we head into the weekend to find out what's going on with it. Now, it will have several issues that it will have to deal with. There's some dry air out ahead of it. There's some stronger upper-level winds. But if the storm holds together and makes it into uh, the areas around the Bahamas by Sunday, it could develop further. It may be called Irma. We'll keep an eye on it. And then the last thing in the forecast that I think is of importance is, of course, the eclipse coming up. For today, a northwest wind at about 10 knots. We'll be looking at a light chop with two foot seas. And on Eclipse Monday, we'll probably have an increase in cloud cover and rain chances. And just like on Sunday, those showers will be occurring closer to the coast. So for eclipse viewing, I think it'll probably be intermittent, we'll call it. Back to you. All right, thank you so much, John. Taking a look at your first alert traffic, looks like congestion is picking up throughout Manatee County, mostly on 301 and State Road 70, as it usually does throughout your morning commute. As we head south into Sarasota County, looks like that uh, construction over towards the Bayfront has since picked up and not a whole lot. Well, just kidding. <laughs> it is back there. Also Clark Road and Bee Ridge Road heading towards the interstate seeing some slowdowns and 41 heading northbound throughout Osprey seeing some more cars on the roadway, but no accidents at 618 on your Friday morning. Well, right now it is eclipse mania across the country. We all know it and yesterday marked day two of a huge solar eclipse glasses giveaway at local libraries. Now hundreds flocked outside of one Manatee County library in hopes of snagging a pair of those free shades. Libra the library ran out in just five minutes. Our photojournalist Sammy Chido shows us the crowd. It's kind of the night sun. It's almost like the night and the day are combining into one for a second. When you look up, you kind of have to wonder about what's happening and kind of just the magic of it all. And it's above and beyond us. So it's, it's really cool to think about and see. We'll definitely try and watch it. We don't know where to get the glasses, though. We didn't realize what the mania would be. And it's a county of over 350,000 people and 1,000 glasses. The math doesn't add up. 1,000 for the whole county. It seems like a cool opportunity to be able to experience this thing that doesn't happen that often with the solar eclipse. Well, it's not something that you can see all the time. So for us, it's um, exciting because maybe it won't happen again in his lifetime. The moon is what, you know, illuminated the city and your surroundings, and it kind of was the only light you had at night um, along with the stars. So I think it's something that we've always been tied to at night because it kind of meant full moon means safety kind of at night. 
Um, you can see around you when there's no moon, it's dark, scared. Well, for those of you that cannot get your hands on glasses, you may be wondering how you can pre protect your eyes while witnessing Monday's historic event. When the Sun Coast is treated to a partial view of that eclipse next week, many may be looking up at the sun for an extended period of time. Doctors say you should not do without protection for your eyes. With all this buzz going around uh, about the solar eclipse, they're going to probably just want to look up. And again, the sun won't be as bright uh, as it typically is because we'd be, be blocked by the, by the moon. Um, so they're going to be tempted to, to look up and stare um, at, at, a, at kind of a partial eclipse, and, and that can be very dangerous. It can develop a condition called solar retinopathy. You can have severe, severe damage to the retinas. To view the solar eclipse, it's recommended that you use those solar-approved glasses and not regular sunglasses. To verify if your glasses are real, you have to look for an ISO number on the inside of the frames. If that number is not there, you should not use the glasses to look directly at the sun. And the U.S. Postal Service is celebrating this year's eclipse with a special memento. They're now offering a commemorative stamp that changes appearance when you touch it, all thanks to a special thermochronic ink. The photo then changes back to the eclipsed sun as it cools off. Now, this is the first time the Postal Service has used the ink in a stamp. The total eclipse of the sun forever stamp can be ordered on the U.S. Postal Service's website for about $8 for 16 stamps. Sounds like a good idea. Well, still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast, we're learning new details about a study focusing on sports and concussions. We'll tell you what experts and parents are saying when we come back. Fresh out of the box, the Alfa Romeo won us over. We went in skeptical and left in awe of this gorgeous machine. Rediscover your passion for driving at Sunset Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. When you want to get away from it all, to a place where you can do everything, or nothing at all, surrounded by natural beauty and all the modern amenities you might desire, then you'll want to be here. At the Wannabe Inn, on the beautiful shores of Minnesota Key, Florida. To plan your escape, log on to wannabein.com. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. I witnessed him have two heart attacks in ICU. He went through seizures. We'd much rather have Aaron like this than dead. A lot of parents don't have that luxury. He can't talk. He can't walk. This is a condition Aaron will live with for the rest of his life because he abused prescription pills. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. It does things that seem impossible. Feeling like it could change direction while airborne. Rediscover your passion for driving at Sunset Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. 
Welcome back. That is a live look in Barcelona where a large group is gathering this morning to remember the victims and yesterday's terror attack. We'll continue to keep you updated as this story unfolds across ABC 7 throughout the morning. Welcome back 625 and there is a new study that looks at what parents think about concussions and sports. ABC's Lindsay, Lindsay D Davis has details. In this morning's GMA First Look, researchers at the Barrow Neurological Institute in Arizona want parents to know concussions aren't limited to the gridiron. In a new survey conducted by the Institute, 85% of parents say they would permit their kids to participate in any contact sport. And while only two-thirds of parents say they would allow their child to play football, nine of ten parents said they were fine with letting their children take part in soccer even though soccer has the highest rates of concussion of any teen sport. The greatest rise of that participation is actually in girls' sports. The number one increase is actually in cheer. Alexa Chiazzo was treated at the Barrow Institute after three concussions. I couldn't read, I couldn't write. Coming up at 7 a.m., Dr. Jennifer Ashton weighs in live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Lindsay Davis, ABC News, New York. My daughter is studying to be a dentist, and she gave me advice. She said, Dad, go pro with Crest Pro Health. Four out of five dentists confirm these pro health products helped maintain a professional clean. Go pro with Crest Pro Health. Crest Pro Health really brought my mouth to the next level. Oh, wow. What kind of underwear are those? They're breathable underwear from Fruit of the Loom. Wait, Fruit of the Loom makes breathable underwear? Yeah, they have tiny holes to let the air through, but... Yes! I love them. Stay cool with breathable underwear from Fruit of the Loom. twist on the Oreo cookie you love. 80% of recurrent ischemic strokes could be prevented with the right steps. And take it from me, every step counts. A Bayer aspirin regimen is one of those steps in helping prevent another stroke. Be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an aspirin regimen. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. This is an important medical announcement. Talcum powder products from some of the best known brands have been linked to ovarian cancer. Any woman who has used a talcum powder product and has been diagnosed with ovarian cancer may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that women with long-term use of talcum powder, including baby powder for feminine hygiene, can increase the risk of contracting ovarian cancer. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to women who should have been warned about the risks of ovarian cancer with long-term use of talcum powder. Call the talcum powder hotline. If you or a loved one used talcum powder and were diagnosed or died from ovarian cancer, you must call now. Call 800-570-7599, 800-570-7599. Since 1928, Karistan has been setting the standard in carpets and rugs, producing non-allergenic wools that won't promote the growth of bacteria or dust mites like other carpets will. Karistan wools actively remove contaminants from the indoor air, making your home healthier. And there are many colors and patterns and textures to choose from. Come see for yourself. So many possibilities worth exploring, Minnesota flooring. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. 
and that helped precisely identify where my cancer was and some additional cancers that were not found during the biopsy. I would recommend the Detoli Cancer Center. As a group of human beings, they are unbelievably great. The ABC7 First Alert Hurricane Guide. Download yours today. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Coming up on Good Morning Sun, Sun Coast, professional rowing teams across the world are packing their bags and heading to the Sun Coast. We'll have a live report on the changes coming to Nathan Benderson Park. Plus, changes to medical marijuana regulations that could lead to more dispensaries opening up in our area. Those stories and more now on Good Morning Sun Coast. Live from the ABC 7 studios, this is Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. Welcome back. Beautiful shot over the horizon of Sarasota this morning. Looks pretty nice as the sun is rising at 631. Thanks so much for joining us on this Friday. I'm Jacqueline Matter. Ray Collins has the morning off. Let's check in with meteorologist John Scalzi. Just about an hour and a half until that rocket launch. John, are you getting yep. excited? Atlas 5, yeah, I hope we get to see some of it. That would be kind of nice if we did. They're usually kind of low-level flights, but this one's going to space, so, you know, maybe we'll be able to uh, <laughs> catch something. That would be kind of nice. Um, we do have some cloud cover that we're fighting, though, so mm, we'll see how it goes. The cloud cover kind of left over from yesterday's activity will continue to drift out into Gulf waters, mix away, leaving us with a fair amount of sunshine to start off the day and a chance of a shower or two as we head into later morning, early afternoon. They'll start early on across the coastline, but then they'll move inland as the west wind begins to develop. Slightly less rain chance today than yesterday, coming in at about a 30% rain chance. But tomorrow, even less rain chance. We'll talk about that coming up in just a few. We will check back in with you shortly. Taking a look at traffic this morning, 301 heading north and southbound, seeing your biggest slowdowns as well as State Road 70 heading towards 301 in Manatee County. I-75 and 41 looking good as we head into Sarasota County. Your biggest slowdowns throughout that area are on Clark Road and 41 heading southbound as you pass by the Stickney Point Bridge. South County looking pretty quiet. It's 632 on your Friday morning. Topping our news this hour, professional rowing teams from across the world are packing their bags and heading to the Sun Coast for training ahead of the 2017 World Rowing Championships. Soon, residents will start to see some big changes at Nathan Benderson Park, with the international event just a few weeks away. That's where we find ABC 7's Jess Dowdrick with more on what we can expect. Jess? Good morning, Jacqueline. In less than three weeks, the first team from overseas, Ukraine, will be coming here to Nathan Benderson Park to start training. Even though the competition does not start until September 24th, most teams will be here before that, preparing on the water. In the next week, containers will be arriving from overseas with the skulls and shells that the rowers will be using here at Nathan Benderson Park. Also, grandstands and other infrastructure here at the park will soon be going up while finishing touches are being put on the new lookout tower. Tickets are going fast. The World Rowing Championship organization already meeting 80% of their revenue goal a month before the event. But tickets are expected to go even faster in coming weeks. The United States is one of several countries that still hasn't solidified which rowers will compete. Friends and family expected to purchase tickets after the rosters are set. Now to kick off this international competition, an opening ceremony will take place and organizers are hoping you will be there. So we're, we're really trying to, to push this event. We're really trying to push opening ceremony, which is taking place on the evening of September 23rd. It is a free, non-ticketed event. Uh, it's going to be a fabulous display of local talent, uh, a wonderful fireworks uh, spectacle. Uh, so we, we want the community to, to really come out to, to that event. September 7th is the day that the first team will be arriving here at the park and a majority of the teams who will be competing in the 2017 World Rowing Championships will be training here before the event. There are a few teams that will be elsewhere throughout the state, but I'm told a majority of them will be right here in the Sarasota Bradenton area. Reporting live in Sarasota, Jess Dowdrick, ABC7, your Suncoast News. 
All right, thanks so much, Jess. Florida Highway Patrol is on the lookout this morning for a driver involved in a hit and run crash in Manatee County. It happened along State Road 64 last night. Witnesses describing the vehicle as a green Nissan Pathfinder that failed to slow when traffic came to a stop. That vehicle then colliding into the car in front of it, which then hit the vehicle in front of them before it all they all drove or that one drove away. Luckily, no injuries have been reported. If you have any information on this crash, you're asked to contact Manatee County Crime Stoppers at the number listed on your screen. 635 this morning and new state regulations are changing the way local governments deal with medical marijuana clinics and dispensaries, including the city of Northport. The change came after a special session in Tallahassee earlier this summer. Now Northport, which was allowed to only have two cannabis dispensaries, will no longer have the ability to limit how many open up. The state is now considering these new offices as pharmacies, which means local governments cannot regulate them any more than they would a CVS pharmacy. However, Northport does not even regulate regular pharmacies. The more access for the patients, the better, of course. You know, I'd like to say that I think one of the reasons that the Northport circumstance was as it was is that we actually had their county commissioners here in the office back in January or February. Or the city of Venice still has a moratorium in place. These new regulations could help them keep that ban in place moving forward. A new study area for students at the State College of Florida in Venice is celebrating its grand opening. SCF officials held a ribbon cutting ceremony for the Gator Den, which is a study area for students accepted into the University of Florida's Gator Engineering Program. It's an engineering course that allows students to be admitted to UF's Engineering College while starting their education at SCF. We started conversations two years ago with some community partners about how we were going to fill the talent gap for engineering in this area. And um, when UF came to the table to bring their expertise, it was the easiest yes I ever came across in my professional career. But what's exciting about it is when they start here, they get connected with companies here and they get internships here. So when they finish their academic career, they're going to come back and work here. Additional benefits to the engineering program include students starting off in smaller class sizes and the chance to save money by earning an accelerated degree. And as State College of Florida students get ready to head back to class next week, the college is also looking to restock its food pantry. It's a program that provides food to students in need and was started last year. School officials reached out last year to ask for assistance in launching that program, which they say was successful. Now they are looking to do the same this year with more help from the community. We gathered over 3,000 items for our students to kick off each of the food banks at, at, at each of our three locations. Um, and then this year what we've done is we've put another call out to the college community, but we of course also sent it out to the, the community at large to say, can you help us uh, provide for our students. The food pantry operates at SCF's three campuses in Bradenton, Lakewood Ranch and Venice. You can still make donations at any of those locations. A shout out to the Sarasota Police Department this morning. The International Association of Chiefs of Police has chosen the Sarasota PD for the 2017 Leadership in Human and Civil Rights Award. The department will also be awarded the Leadership in Law Enforcement Volunteer Program Award. Chief DePino will travel to Philadelphia in October to accept both of those awards. So big congratulations to them. Well, the city of Bradenton is making plans to knock down a historic house just south of downtown. It's been there for over 100 years. And as our Ray Collins shows us, there are some mixed opinions about what to do with this house moving forward. It's kind of sad, and I've had some pictures of it from other times. Kathy Whaley came by to take a few final pictures of the Covington House. It was built by an African-American carpenter in 1911 named Charlie Covington. No one has lived here since the 1970s. That is, if you don't count the vagrants who seek shelter here, which the city says is not safe. In fact, you can see right through to the second floor through a hole in the ceiling. There have been efforts along the way to preserve this house, but one of the growing problems, literally, is that big oak tree which is undermining the house's foundation. Still, Carrie says she's glad parts of the house will be preserved. I was happy to hear they're going to try to do some architectural salvage on it. It's, it's a beautiful house with a lot of beautiful features and craftsmanship worth um, noting and saving. There are three different schools of thought here. Some think that certain elements could be preserved. Others say knock it down. And then a third group that says it should be rehabilitated. In fact, that's the opinion of one of these men out enjoying a cold beverage on a hot summer morning. 
He didn't want his face on camera, but felt since this is one of the oldest African-American houses in Manatee County, it should be saved to inspire kids. Because it's black owned and we don't know that black people was doing that type of thing in the past. Yeah. So that would motivate the youth to do something in the future. Many historians agree this house represents a time and a culture. But with no preservation plan or funding in place and people sneaking in, the end is near, which still makes Carrie quite sad. I'm kind of just a romantic, though, about the older houses. In Bradenton, Ray Collins, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Certainly will be interesting to see how that all unfolds in Bradenton. It will indeed. I think everybody's nostalgic about the old houses and the old architecture. Yeah. And things that sometimes get torn down to build new things. Yeah. yeah. I always like seeing some of the history involved in some of those. Things Absolutely. When you look it up. It's always great to see that. I still miss the old Dairy Queen downtown. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what are you going to do? What oh, are you going to yeah. do? We have uh, some showers in the forecast coming our way. We'll talk about that in just a few. Plus, tropics are active. Okay, still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast. The latest in your first alert traffic. And Taylor Swift is donating to charity after her legal victory last week. We'll tell you what groups she's hoping to help when we come back. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style or this, or maybe this, Contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. What to do when your heating or air conditioning needs service or, heaven forbid, replacement? Call Air Now today. We've been serving Sarasota and Manatee County since 1946. We offer $49.95 tune-ups, lease or finance options, and remember, service today or it's free. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. It's no small wonder. Anybody loves it all. I just love art that moves me. No smile. I mean, really moves me. One. Sunset Fiat of Sarasota presents No Small Wonder. High performance style. Let the art of Fiat move you. You studied hard, went to college, and achieved your dream, but it turned into a financial nightmare. If you have federal student loans and you'd like to reduce your payments, get more time, or have your loans completely eliminated, then we have good news. With one call to Student Loan Relief Services, you can find support and guidance. We've already helped thousands of people, and we can help you too. If you have $10,000 or more in federal student loans, you can qualify for payment extensions, payment reductions, or you may qualify to have your federal student loan completely forgiven. Call Student Loan Relief Services now to find out about your options. Take control of your finances and get out from under this burden. One of our student loan experts has the answers to your questions and great solutions to ease your financial burden. We're here for you. Call Student Loan Relief Services now. Call 800-759-0203. 800-759-0203. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Now your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. So we do have a little bit of cloud cover out there currently, and it'll be a mix of sun and clouds as we start the day. 76 degrees the air temperature, dew point coming in at 73, and a light wind out of the southeast at about 3. That light wind will be shifting from the southeast to the west as we head into the mid-morning and early afternoon. Wachula at 75, so is Arcadia, Mayak at 75, 76, and Parrish, Bradenton, Lakewood Ranch, 77, and Northport. 79 degrees in Inglewood, Venice at 78, and Longbow Key comes in at 80. So a couple of things going on here. We have some scattered showers over on the other coast, an indication of that general light easterly wind flow. 
We have some showers out in Gulf waters. That's where they'll stay. They're not coming back in this direction. And locally, everything's very quiet for your morning commute and should be. We, uh, we will have a couple of showers, I think, develop fairly early on, around lunchtime hour or so, I think, along the coastline. We'll start to see a few storms develop. And then everything kind of shifts inland just exactly like it did yesterday, those kind of east-moving storms, the kind of reverse summertime pattern that we get about 30% of the year here in Florida. High pressure, though, will change all of that as we head into the weekend. Here's the reason why. That high sitting just to our north is going to lift even further to the north and back to the west. As it does that, we'll develop more of an easterly wind flow that'll take those inland showers and push them back to the coast. That'll happen probably on Monday, and yes, it will impact our, our clarity of sky for viewing of the eclipse. Um, I posted on my website... Uh, John Scalzi, ABC 7, the latest RPM computer model forecast of cloud cover on Monday afternoon at 2.51. You might want to check it out. News is not terribly encouraging. It's pretty much what you would expect on a typical August afternoon at about 3 o'clock. There'll be a lot of cloud cover around, and viewing of the eclipse will be somewhat intermittent, I think. Plus, we may have a little tropical system moving into the Bahamas and into Gulf waters over that time period that could bring us a little additional cloud cover around. It's this system right here. Actually, we have three systems out here that we're watching. One, this one, is Harvey. That's of no issue to us. It's a tropical storm. It moves to the east. That one is of interest, and this one will probably recurve back out into the open waters. But this one, with a 70% chance of developing, has forecast tracks that carry it pretty consistently up toward uh, areas of the Bahamas, the Florida Straits, maybe even north of that into the Florida Peninsula by the time we get to, say, Tuesday. Now, we'll have to watch this one pretty carefully. It does have some hurdles to cross over before it gets to us, and it could weaken it significantly before then. But if it manages to get through those hurdles, it could actually strengthen a little bit. So we'll have to keep an eye on it in the time period, probably early next week. Uh, keep an eye on that forecast right straight through the weekend. Back to you. All right. Thank you so much, John. We will check back in with you shortly. Taking a look at traffic in Manatee County, you can see some inter intermittent slowdowns throughout the area. 301 State Road 70, also 64 heading out towards Anna Maria. Looks like there is some uh, random slowdown off of I-75 as you're heading eastbound. And in Sarasota County, 41 seeing some more congestion on the roadway heading north and southbound, especially around Clark Road and across the Stickney Point Bridge heading towards South County. Just some normal slowdowns on your morning commute at 647 this morning. In this hour's Health Smart, we're learning more about a new study that's shedding light on America's drinking habits, and the news isn't so great. Kim Hutcherson has more in today's Health Minute. Americans are drinking a lot more than they used to. That's according to a study published in JAMA Psychiatry. Researchers tracked drinking patterns among 40,000 people during 2002 and 2003, and again in 2013 and 2014. They found that during that time, alcohol use disorders rose by almost 50 percent. Researchers estimate that 30 million people in the U.S. struggle with an alcohol use disorder. That's one out of every eight Americans. The group says that the greatest increase in alcohol use disorders were found among senior citizens. Over the study period, there was a 106.7 percent increase in alcohol use disorders among people 65 and older. An alcohol use disorder is defined by the American Psychiatric Association as a situation where drinking interferes with home, family, or job responsibilities and increases a person's chances of danger or injury. A person with an alcohol use disorder isn't able to stop drinking and experiences withdrawal symptoms when coming down from intoxication. For today's Health Minute, I'm Kim Hutcherson. Switching gears now to entertainment news, Taylor Swift is a woman of her word. After winning her counter suit against a DJ, a Denver DJ this week, Swift announced she would donate money to organizations helping survivors of sexual assault. 
The singer made good on that promise through an undisclosed donation to the Joyful Heart Foundation, a charity run by actress Mariska Hargaday, which assists survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. And here's a unique way to celebrate Monday's solar eclipse. Rolling Stone reports Bonnie Tyler will be performing her classic Total Eclipse of the Heart during the eclipse, of course, on a cruise ship. Royal Caribbean's Total Eclipse Cruise will feature Tyler's performance while the ship is positioned in the path of totality. Talk about some love in the dark for that one. Interesting story there. Still ahead, we'll update your top headlines. And a woman loses her engagement ring only to be reunited with it 13 years later. We'll tell you about the unlikely place her ring popped up after this. When you want to get away from it all, to a place where you can do everything or nothing at all, surrounded by natural beauty and all the modern amenities you might desire, then you'll want to be here at the Wanna Be Inn on the beautiful shores of Minnesota Key, Florida. To plan your escape, log on to wannabein.com. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate... Or shop at Goodwill... I'm creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. This is an important medical announcement. Talcum powder products from some of the best known brands have been linked to ovarian cancer. Any woman who has used a talcum powder product and has been diagnosed with ovarian cancer may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that women with long-term use of talcum powder, including baby powder for feminine hygiene, can increase the risk of contracting ovarian cancer. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential, there's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to women who should have been warned about the risks of ovarian cancer with long-term use of talcum powder. Call the Talcum Powder Hotline. If you or a loved one used talcum powder and were diagnosed or died from ovarian cancer, you must call now. Call 800-570-7599, 800-570-7599. Discover all the reasons the experts love Subaru during the Subaru A Lot to Love event at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Subaru is the best overall brand for two years running and the most trusted brand for three years running, according to Kelly Blue Books, KBB.com. Right now, you can lease one of Subaru's most versatile vehicles, the Subaru Crosstrek, for as little as $189 a month or get 0% financing. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Start your day with a new Good Morning Suncoast team. Weekdays starting at 5 a.m. on ABC7. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Welcome back. 6.53 this morning. Here's a shot of our the 10th Street boat ramp. John says it'll be a little bit of a rain roller coaster over the next few days. We'll check in with him here in just a few minutes. Let's take a look at some of the top stories here on the Sun Coast today. People across the Sun Coast are continuing to react to yesterday's tragedy in Barcelona. The terror attack killed at least 13 people and injured more than 100. Plus, new state regulations are changing the way local governments deal with medical marijuana clinics and dispensaries, including in Northport. Now the city will no longer have the ability to limit how many dispensaries open up. 
And congratulations are in order for the Sarasota Police Department. The International Association of Chiefs of Police has chosen Sarasota PD for the 2017 Leadership in Human and Civil Rights Award, as well as the Leadership in Law Enforcement Volunteer Program Award. Taking a look at traffic this morning, it looks like there are some slowdowns as you're heading into downtown Bradenton. Other than that, 301 heading southbound, seeing some congestion. Also, 41 heading southbound into Sarasota County. 41 and 301 seeing some more cars on the roadway, but Fruitville, B Ridge, and Clark Road looking good. I-75 heading south looking good, but Business 41 throughout Venice seeing some more cars on the roadway. John? Well, think of today as kind of like yesterday, but with fewer showers in the forecast. Uh, about a 30% chance. Tomorrow, even fewer still as we get some drier air working its way in. So, of course, we'll be watching the tropics right straight through the weekend to see how that tropical wave develops. It's forecast to move close to the Bahamas, and it'll be in our vicinity possibly Tuesday night. So we'll have to watch it and see if it develops. And Monday for the eclipse, you can expect some partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. Finally this morning, a long-lost engagement ring recently showed up in the most unexpected place inside a carrot. Take what? a look at that. Many, Mary Grams lost her ring years ago while gardening in her Toronto farm. After she couldn't find it, she decided to get a new ring, of course. Now, 13 years later, Grams got a call from her daughter-in-law who found the ring in that garden in the middle of a freshly pulled carrot. Now it is back on Graham's finger where it belongs. She also admitted her late husband, who died five years ago, never even knew the ring was lost. Oh my goodness, that is insane. That is amazing. What are the chances of a plant growing through a ring lost in the soil? I know. It's incredible. <laughs> That's amazing. Good All story. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys have a great weekend. We hope you have an enjoyable time in the sun. Stick around. Good morning, America's coming up next.